They got power that these kids are listening to. They hearing you. They looking at you and they want to be like you. So if you know in your heart this young kid want to be like you, don't you know if you say something to this kid, that kid going to change and he going to walk the way you walk, talk the way you talk? Now, now what you're doing, you're taking this kid on a path that he, you don't have to worry about him getting in no crime. So now you lessen the crime rate for the future. This was a learning stage for me. This was a process. And I think, well, I'm not gonna say I think I know Liam knew what he was doing. See, Liam gave me something to help other kids, just like he helped me as a child. So he placed that in my heart. And so John Baker helped tighten it up. What I mean by that, in the process of being in law enforcement, you know, you go through the six months academy. Once you get out of the six months academy, you usually sign to a courtroom. But some strange reason, I always found myself in juvenile court. And in that juvenile court, I will always hear those kids cry. And some of those kids uh, were, were in trouble because they wanted, they wanted help. And I would talk to them and, and I would hear them. Some of those kids, it's just like uh, when you're in school and you raise your hand, but the teacher never calls on you. They pick someone else and they're jumping up trying to get the teacher's attention, wanting to see if they were loved, you know. And I heard that. And I, some of the kids I was able to talk to and they would listen to me, talk to them. But I also, by being in juvenile court, I would hear some of the good, some of those good judges that would get on that bench would really uh, talk to these kids. And if someone, if they are listening, they wouldn't come back that route because they you had some really good uh, judges that actually reached out to these kids you know, and really cared about their well-being. I served many years in the courthouse, and that was a learning experience because within that uh, courthouse, I became friends with judges, uh, lawyers, uh, met other friends, uh, other police officers, other, you know, other people that would be play a big part in what I'm about to do later in life. And say, Sarge, I'm thinking about starting an organization on youth because youth matters to me. And I told him, I said, I'll back you 100% on that. If you wanted to start on that, go ahead and do it. And he mentioned to me, well, you know, I'm starting this out with my own money. I'm not waiting on anyone. I said, Robert, I said, well, I'm going to be a donor to help you start your program. And I say, if we start like this with you and I, I say, you will have, achieve all the goals that you want to on this program. But when he, when he called me and said that he was doing this, um, you know, doing this thing about the youth, you know, I was just like, look, man, you know, whatever you need, you need me to come talk to kids, whatever you need me to do, man, just let me know. Because I was, I was proud of him uh, doing that. I was proud of him getting involved in the Sheriff's Department, too. Um, you know, because in, and then I guess he saw, you know, what was going on and the stuff that he had to deal with that really, you know, made him want to do that, that particular calling. But I was, I was very proud of him. Still am. But he believed in the youth. And that's one thing that started when he was very young. Someone believed in him and he wanted to pass that on to the youth. When he started Our Youth Matters, um, he saw something that I didn't see. And I think a lot of his life experiences connected him to that Our Youth Matters profit also. Um, and I never saw it gaining this much momentum and being as big as it is and having this platform now where he's showing, not just in speech, but in action that our youth really matters. 
and it makes you want to be a part of it and get involved, especially when you know him. Knowing him gives you a different perspective on our youth matters. That's who he is. He has a great rapport with those kids because you don't see no hollering and screaming or anything like that. But discipline comes with what he does. And that's a great thing as well. I mean, his mission is one that is going to be tough, one that he has jumped in full force to take on. And I mean, he's been doing this for years. I don't know if people know how many years he's been at this, planning things, trying to do things to help the community and to help kids. And he's going to strive. He's going to keep on doing it as long as he lives because he sees what needs to be done. And he's stepping up, taking, you know, taking a leadership role in addressing those needs that need to be done. Robert does things for people. Not that he is getting anything out of it for himself, not even being compensated, you know, with monies. But he's doing it because he sees that there's a need and he's trying to help somebody else, especially those who cannot help themselves. And, and it, it's, it's really about the youth. And, and that's when I think about Robert and what he's doing, I think about the kids that he's influenced and I think that's awesome. You know, like I always tell people like, you know, yeah, getting, getting money and giving money is great, but there's nothing more important than your time. And I think that he has put a lot of time in and people would much rather see you physically than say, okay, so-and-so donated, you know, $20,000, but then that person never comes. You know, it's, it's much better to see the person and it's good that Bucci is hands-on, and he, or Robert is hands-on and involved. Well, we was excited because uh, Robert was one of the first uh, people, you know, with his program, um, Our Youth Matters, to recognize our football team publicly after winning the state championship, and we thought that was awesome. And we got to go down to uh, downtown Raleigh and, and visit the Hall of Fame, and he had some great speakers there, uh, some celebrity that spoke to the team, and. Uh, very inspirational to the team and myself. The, the thing that um, I really like about Robert and those who were associated with him is that they were doing this, this to help those kids and not themselves. Not to see how they could grease their palm, you know, you know, but to see how they could help somebody else. And that's the thing that turns me on, even in these days and time with people when people have a, a, you know, something about them where they see the need to do something and they go and do it or try to find out how they can do it or how they can be a part of doing something. And even today with what he does, you know, uh, he still has the attitude, always wanting to do something for the kids. Do you want better just for yourself? Or do you want better for your people? And, and I think all of us have a responsibility, an obligation, if you will, to help organizations like Youth Matters. Janetta Cole gave a speech one time and it was entitled, Lift As You Climb. And, and I think we should all be guided by that. Um, I've made it, I'm successful, I'm happy, I have what I need and want. Um, don't close the door on that keep that door open that somebody else can in fact be blessed as you are. Um, that's the fact why we are blessed. It's, it's said in the scripture that um, we give you an abundance that you may share it with others. And so organizations like Our Youth Matters is so critical. Being a mentor for somebody that's coming up, allowing them to benefit by your experience. Experience is a very, very um, expensive school. It, 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 it gives you the test first, and then it gives you the lesson after that. And so we can save some of that cost to you, um, to the youth, and, and say, listen, uh, <laughs> I tried that one. It doesn't work too well, and, and, and guide them another way. And so um, God bless Mitch. You know, a, a lot of us say things, but he's doing things. And so the creation of, of Our Youth Matters is, is critical to the success of the children coming behind us. But when I say our youth matters, I'm not talking about one race. I'm talking about the human race. So I don't want the people to think that I'm just talking about one race. I don't care what, we're we talking about human race. I have always been taught by my dad to treat people 
the way that you would like to be treated. Every day that I wake up, I'm the same person. I'm no mean person, I have the same attitude. I don't treat no one no different. And so that went a long way with me. I reach out to the community and try to help a lot of kids. But it's also other people that reach out to the community and help other kids. And I would put my organization together and I would honor certain people for doing certain things in the community. Because we're not in this by ourselves, we in this together, you know, we're all in this together. So it's been so good, it's been really good to me. I have turned a lot of lives, I, 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 a lot of kids have looked up to me and, and I'm, I'm not stopping, I'm full, I got, I got energy like a tiger, I'm ready to keep on going. Yeah. <laughs>